Hello, everybody. So I have my special guest here back on the show, Ricardo. He's an ESFJ. He has a really cool channel. Be sure to check it out. It's on astrology. And today we're going to talk about the types and the planets. So just personally reporting on my own beliefs regarding astrology, I'm agnostic. I'm very open to listen and hear. I really love the symbolism behind it. So, and I think there's a lot that we could learn from it, whether you believe it or not, in terms of how the planets could relate to the types or symbolize the types in some sort of way. So Ricardo, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Leon. Thank you for having me back and inviting me back. Good to be here. Yes. And so can you tell us a bit about what your thoughts are here about the relationship between planets and also types? Yes. So when it comes to, because being an ES, ESFJ, my, my SI loves to categorize archetypes and people. And I'm the, I'm the non-typical type of person to be into astrology. A lot of intuitive types are actually more into astrology than more of the sensory types. But what I noticed is that with the planet archetypes, according to what you read on the internet or what they've gathered, it's very similar to the archetypes of MBTI. Mm. Well, whether it's like one aspect or just several aspects into one. So there is some correlation if you know your planet energy or they call it synergy with the archetypes. Excellent. Hey guys, so I just want to let you know that I've made this article called Making Meaning Out of Life's Challenges. If you're interested in reading it, I will link to the article down below in the description box. And I also have an Instagram page as well full of my writing. And if you want to take a look at that, I will link to that down below. You started this recent project on the planets and the types. It, it was inspired by something I did earlier on my channel. So I related ESFJ, ESFP to the sun piece of how generous the sun is, how bright the sun is and shines a light on everyone at the same time also could be overbearing and very very present too as well in, in your face so a lot of the qualities of esfj and also esfp can you tell us uh, more about this can you tell us about how you created this system or how you created yeah. what you did so with your system because you said esfj esfp so the first three letters esf Makes complete sense because of the SI and SE and the FE and FI. So when right. it comes to the sun, the typical archetype for the energy of the sun is vitality, happiness, positivity. So when you think of the sun, it's sometimes too bright. It's scorching and you're like, ah, you're too mm. happy. Stop it. <laughs> or it's like, oh, it feels good to be around you. I like your presence. We, when we walk in a room, ESFPs and ESFJs, you know we're in the room. They always tell us, you're the life of the party. When you're not there, you're noticed. If you're there, we know you're there. So the, the sun is all about that sense of vitality, the sense of ego, and we just put it out there like the sun. So it's very typical with the ESFJ, ESFP personality. Excellent. So just for a sense of clarity, I just yeah. want to talk about that. The reason why we put ESFJ and ESFP together is that we're talking about the first and sixth function. So usually we think about the strongest functions of ESFP as being expert sensing and introvert feeling, and for ESFJs as being expert feeling and also introvert sensing. Mm -hmm. But if you look at socionics, the strongest functions of both is expert sensing, expert feeling. So how you can look at that is that ESFPs, they value expert sensing and introvert feeling, but still, even though they don't value extroverted feeling, it's still a very strong function that's in the background. And same thing with ESFJs, they value extroverted feeling and introverted sensing, but very strong extroverted sensing in the background. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because I work with a lot of ESFPs at work, and we just, I can tell when there's an ESFP, we are just the loudest in the room, we get kicked out of a restaurant, we're the ones starting the karaoke, getting people together. So we just have the sense of joy and positivity all around. Wonderful. Do you have anything else you want to share about ESFP or ESFJ? Or do you want to talk about the other types here? I think that's mainly it for that's I've covered the most of it from the first part, just like the whole 
I know for those who don't believe, they're like, oh, you know, this could be something like anyone can think of it, but it's very true with the whole aspects of the sun. The main part is the vitality, ego, positivity, and bringing yourself out to the world. And you can feel the warmth and the sun rays of those personalities. Okay. So now let's go to the opposite of these types. So that is the INTs, INTJs, INTPs. So I've designated them as the moon. How do you relate them to the moon? Yeah. So so the INTP and, and INTJ, you notice that they're very, they have that NI and NE kind of background. So they really love to, and the word is reflection. Well, yeah. Um, can you say it again? So, so for for these two types, INTP, INTJ, um, the main functions here, the first and sixth function would be intuition and intro thinking. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And so it's all introverted. When it comes to the moon, it's all about reflection, introversion, and reflecting inwards. Because the moon can definitely have many phases, but it doesn't really tell you exactly what those phases are. So that the um, archetype words for the moon is introspection, reflection, intuition, and a sense of mystery as well, too. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. And what I, th- what I think about the moon is something that is a cold, hard rock out there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then there's moon. one side you just don't see at all. Like mm-hmm. there's something that's hidden. Uh, the sun like, likes to let everything out there, let it all out. Right? It, but the sun is very generous but doesn't know how to be able to use its energy prudently whereas uh intjs and intps you could say is over prudence like they kind of we're withholding way too much and you could talk to them and say they kind of feel like they're not like coming to life as much as they like they they wish that they're more more free and not stuck in that intro intuition intro thinking energy exactly and the nighttime i find a lot of intjs and ITPs come to life during the nighttime. They have the best ideas during the night. And if you ah. think about the ESFJ personality, the complete opposite of ESFJ, the sun, is INTP, the moon. So wow. it's kind of like mm. the shadow of each other. We love, we really revolve around each other and work around each other. But we have these opposing, if you look at the cognitive function stack, um, F, E, S, I, N, E, and T, I, it's just in reverse. So how do you find it to be like when you're in your shadow energy? I find myself just like the INTP. I really re- like reflect inwards. I think about what, I, what am I feeling? What just happened? And I like to gather all my ideas and memories in a more like talking to myself, dialogue, inner dialogue, and just inner reflection, just like the moon. Got it. Let's now move on to other types. So ENF. P and also ENFJ. So what would you designate them as? Okay, so ENFP and ENFJ, they're very, okay, the, the planet is Jupiter. Jupiter is all about expansion and growth. That's exactly yeah. what the ENFJ and ENFP likes to do because they have all these ideas and they like to grow on the facts. ENFP will have a thought and there's kind of like build it up like popcorn into, into lily pads and it's just new ideas after new idea. Well, the ENFJ, it's all about their circle. They like to have these social circles and gather their ideas out to the people. So when I think of the the idea of Jupiter, the archetype words is expansion, growth, and a sense of like the guru, you know, the guru of knowledge and the guru of thoughts. Yes. So the way I see these types are related is them. They're very interested in inspiring other people with great ideas. That's right. It's all ME ideas and it's just ex- expanding collaborative and it's just a sense of community but in a way that it's about i have this idea and i have this concept let's bring it to life together right and that together aspect is the extra feeling part of it exactly Both of them. and the thing is when you observe enfps talk compared to enfps think enfps are more they're more obviously super passionate about things mm-hmm. like, that's right right so now let's go to the opposite types, the ISTP and ISTJ. So how, how do you designate them? Okay, so when it comes to Jupiter, like with the with ENFP and ENFJs, the kind of like brother planet or sister planet, I would say, or the father planet is Saturn. That's the word that I associate with ISTP and 
is an ISTJ, those are those, that's the typical thing that I see because Saturn is all about discipline, um, structure, um, karmic events, and things that you do this, this happens. Let's build on this and let's, let's create a structure and a discipline to make it work. So with the ISTJ, it's all about you know details, a system. If it's not done the proper way, then they get very flustered. And with the ISTP, they kind of like see the world in a way that I'm going to build things and I'm going to create in a way that, that's structured and has the discipline with their thoughts. So that's why yes. I think that Saturn is the best way to describe those archetypes. Right. So the way I see them as opposites, so when it comes to ENFP, ENFJ, they want to inspire people with ideas, but they get, lo get lost in very vague in being very general and not specific and how do exactly do you carry out these visions in a very tangible, concrete way? Um, so they kind of lack that. They also tend to be greater in life. And maybe a downfall of ENFP, ENFJ energy is that they uh, they could think that they're the center of the universe. Yes. <laughs> but they're not. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. And you could see the shadow side of them that there's a part of them that wants to be more of like a supporter Mm -hmm. It's a supportive type. That's right. The Saturn type is more restricted. It's more like, I think Jupiter is more, what's the word? Macroscopic. I don't know which is the word, but then yeah. Saturn is microscopic. Like these are the facts. We're going to make these together, make this happen concisely. Well, Jupiter is like, oh, we have so many possibilities. ENFP and FJ. Let's just network, network. While Saturn and ISTP and ICG is more like, no, no, no. These are the facts. Let's break it down and just hone in what we need to focus on right yeah. mm -hmm. and the thing with icp and istjs they might have trouble getting excited about things mm -hmm. they, they kind of get involved in all this technical uh humdrum of of life and they they part of them aspires to have that kind of excitement of something greater outside of themselves and mm -hmm. ENF, enfjs enfps they already have that but maybe they're striving to be more of like a supportive type, like mm -hmm. kind of like how ICJs and ICPs are. They're supportive in being able to handle all this, all the stuff without all the technical nitty gritty stuff without a lot of fanfare. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the, that's one thing I just want to add is that with Saturn, it's a very strict planet. It's the fatherly planet. So if you think of all the fatherly qualities, making sure that everything's under control and just kind of concise and disciplined, that's, really the ISTJ, ISTP mentality. It's like, you know, let's let's not create chaos like Jupiter. Let's just keep things under control. Right. And I bet when it comes to their shadow selves, when it comes to the nighttime, they're the opposite. Now, now let's go to ISFJ and ISFP. So when it comes to the ISFJ and ISFP, the, immediately I thought of the planet Venus. Because when you think of the word Venus, the first archetypes that come along is love, creativity, romance, and ambition. That's exactly with ISFJ and ISFJ. I think it's leading more to ISFP. But when it comes to Venus, it's all about relationships and attraction. So with the ISFP, they love to create with their hands. They love, they see the beauty of things and say, I'm going to make something out of this. And with the ISFJ, it's in relationships. They like this harmony with all the people that they work with behind the scenes. And so they want to create the sense of harmony and relationship with the people they're they're whether they're like whether they're behind the scenes or just kind of like charting the course, they like to have this yeah. sense of harmony. So I think the key word for these three types is harmony and um, creativity, I would say. Right. <clears throat> and it's a very earthy kind of striving for aesthetics. And yes, that, that there's a fine there's a fine detail that's involved. You can see it in how a lot of them are dressed, both both types. Very true. That's right. I work with an ISFJ and an IS, ISFP. They both, for example, the ISFJ likes to create structure and beauty in the surroundings. They're like, I'm gonna make this lesson plan and I'm gonna make sure everyone around me is comfortable and it works. While the ISFP is creating all these beautiful things, saying, Well, I'm gonna make the place look good, while you try to make everyone else happy. So kind of works. Yeah. Wonderful. And now let's go to the opposite energy. So this is ENT, ENTJ, ENTP. So what did you choose for them? Okay, so this is interesting because I was thinking, what could possibly be the opposite of Venus and what could be the opposite archetype? It's the planet Uranus. 
when it comes to Uranus, it's all about innovation and invention. So that's typically the ENTJ, ENTP type. ENTJ mm. likes to invent with ideas, innovate with projects, while the ENTP is with their thoughts, their conversations, and ideas. Uranus is a very far planet, so their ideas are very far away. You're not sure exactly where they're coming from, but they can see so far away that you're like, oh, that makes complete sense. Because right. Uranus is this very mystery, detached, and very thinking type of planet. And I believe these two exactly are the thinking types as opposed to the archetype, which is Venus, more affectionate, warm, and, and relationship-wise. Right. So ENTP, ENTJ represent the energy of innovation that comes from a good understanding of x-ray intuition of the possibilities of ideas and x-ray thinking in terms of being able to invent having a very strong knowledge of how things work like a how-to uh their weakness is that they're very cerebral so they have a lack of sense of process so when i look at east east isfjs and isfps they're very into this sense of process that's not necessarily verbal. It's very visceral. And when you're creating art, that's what it's all about. And ENTPs, ENTJs are not into process. They're really, they're very mentally quick and very mentally fast. Like almost, I kind of look at their mind almost like it's electricity. Mm -hmm. yes. And yeah. I compare that when you compare that to INTPs and INTJs, INTPs and INTJs, they're intelligent more in a very ponderous kind of deeply philosophical sense. It's not necessarily a very fast mental activity, but uh, it's a deeper one. But like for ENTPs, ENTJs, it's like psh, 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 very fast. But I hear them complain about they they feel like they're out of touch with the process itself. Mm -hmm. So That's I right. remember like I, I was writing a poem and then and the ENTP says oh so this is the point of the poem right and mm -hmm. his idea was just to get to the point of the poem it's like no there's the, like there's a process behind like experiencing the poem it's not just getting what's the point so they they're these types are kind of like in a rush exactly yeah i find that uranus are more intellectual and that venus is more uh physical so they like to like the isfp isfp is a very hands-on whether you're helping someone or creating someone but with the Uranus energy with ENTJ and um, ENTP, they're very cerebral and intellectual with ideas. They're, they're detached from it in a sense like, I have this idea and it's not with me. I'm not going to touch it, but I will ponder and think and find ways to construct it. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I just imagine we're not these types. I, I'm just kind of curious about what they're like at nighttime. Yeah. Because <laughs> I know with Uranus, when it comes to I guess the shadow aspects of Uranus, they become very, what's the word? Um, they become very doubtful. They start to become very skeptic. And they're like, well, I don't see this happening. This is not a good idea. And sometimes very combative, like argumentative, I would say. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes like, I, I think I do see ISFJs and ISFPs, they're yearning for that world of innovation and invention, something beyond just like the practical or aesthetic beautiful realm of life that's right yeah so let's go on to estp and estj so what do they what do you have for them well automatically they're the in charge type so you think of the planet mars it's yes all about, you know the hundred mm -hmm. movie like charge and break <laughs> all these type of movies because they have all this te which is it's like extroverted thinking and the sense of like um, get, getting out there their ideas, whether it's inward or outward. So the, yes. the word, the keyword is power. They have a sense of drive and ambition. Mars is all about drive, ambition, power, initiative, and getting things done. That's exactly the ESTP. If somebody fell, I always find the EPs, the, especially the ETPs, right there just like, are you okay? What are we going to do? Call the ambulance. While the ESTJ is like, yeah, you do this, you do that. So you work those two together and you can feel that energy coming out just like the planets of Mars. It, yeah, that's really fascinating. And th so when you have these two types, when you look at the first and six functions, which are the strongest that is X-ray sensing, X-ray thinking. So this is the realm of the absolute external tangible. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of getting the tangibles 
done in life, they're very successful at that. In exactly. this aspect like, of life. I symbolize like this is complete physical. Like the ESFJs are more like presence. And then I guess yeah, ISFJs and ISFPs are about their creations, but ESTJs and ESTPs are all about action. Getting things done. Let's go, go, go. Because I have no time. I can't waste the fire, like the fiery planet is inside of me. And let's just get it done. Yeah. Perfect. Wow. And now let's talk about INFP and INFJ. So what do you have for us? So the remaining planet, I guess I would say, is Neptune, which completely because when I was charting these things, I was like, everything makes sense. All the planets that coincide with these types, there's an actual planet archetype for this. So the mm -hmm. INF is all about the planet Neptune. Neptune is all about spirituality. Um, it's a sense of mystery, illumination. And this, this almost like, I don't want to say religion, but it's a sense of like connecting to people in a very transcendent and spiritual way. So the INFJ likes to really understand relationships while the INFP creates a world that's all about their imagination. So Neptune is also a far outer planet. And that's why sometimes you're like, what are they thinking? What are they talking about? What planet are you from? That's exactly, or they felt kind of like left out at the beginning, because it's true. They are so far in their world, the inner world, that it's just profound when they start yes. speaking it eloquently. Yeah. Yeah. So we're a little less um, in terms of the typical outward measures of success, we're having a lot of difficulty with, with that realm of life. But mm -hmm. what we yeah. are in tune with is the intangibles of life. Mm -hmm. And we're different from. ENFP, ENFJ energy piece there, it's that energy is more expansive exactly. in terms of its visionary nature. And then for us, it's kind of like more cohesive. So actually, I was with this ENFP and we were playing this game that we created in which we had to choose cards and half the cards are... Some of the cards have pictures that have a lot of things that are like all over the place. There's a lot of things going on. And the other ones are like more cohesive, more of like one singular kind of image. And I always gravitated towards the latter, the singular <laughs> images. And then the ENFP was like all the things that are like everywhere and all about. And and so I, I see it, I see it in in terms of that. Exactly. Like with the whole introverted feeling and extroverted thinking, I mean, introverted feeling, extroverted intuition, or introverted intuition and extroverted um, feeling, that's, they both have this, that, you're right, Jupiter is expansive, but Neptune is like inward, but very deep, while Jupiter is expansive, very deep out of the world, you're very deep within. That's exactly right. like very Neptune um, spirituality and energy. Yes, and I could tell you about the nighttime version myself, and I could confirm this on behalf of INFJ because we often form friendships around this, around like thinking about the other side of ourselves, often wishing and aspiring towards the idea of being an action hero or being a person of action into the world. And we often like focus almost in a entrepreneurial ways. Like how can we be that kind of person mm -hmm. out, out in a world? And the other thing my friend made a comment about it is that she often finds that when INFJs and INFPs write about stuff, they often, it's after they kind of go out and have an experience and they, they want to write about it, how that experience is like. And I, <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny because that's exactly what I did. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's opposite of the whole Mars, ESTB, ESTG. They're just like, right away, right now, immediate. While you're like, hold on, I'm going to take a step back, yeah. reflect on words and just, I'll get it done eventually once I'm, figured out what's what I need to articulate. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And, and again, when I, because I work as a therapist, I often, when I work with the different types, I do see the other side of them. And it's always very apparent to me. And uh, when I work with ESTPs and ESTJs, it's this idea that they do want to get into this more spiritual and intangible realm. And they might have some trouble accessing it because they're out in the the real world in itself but they're longing to connect with that aspect of themselves. Exactly. Yeah, that's very profound. That's why I find it so fascinating that there's relevance with the planet archetypes and energies with the types in that sense. It's very, it's very, very interesting. Are there any final thoughts you want to add? 
Yeah, so for those who are like, for the first time, just learning about astrology, or you're like thinking, astrology is not all about just like, what's your sign? All the planets are involved, and it's all about the planet energies. So if you're like an SI type, or you like the idea of like having different energies, categorizing them to different archetypes, this will become very fascinating, because you can see the correlation of the planets in people as well. Because some could be more, you know, energetic, some could be more reflective, so it could be more like innovative, more some are more expansive, spiritual, uh, powerful, and very structured. So the planets are exactly the same way. The inner circle are more personal, and the outer circles are more kind of like inward and put to themselves. So there is some correlation. And I can see why, was it that you said that Carl Jung was into these things? Because there yes. is some sort of uh, relevance to it. Yeah, yeah Carl Jung was in interested in astrology. <laughs> So when you first presented this idea, I was excited, and now I'm even more drawn into it. So yeah. it's like, this is this is really great stuff. So be sure to check out Ricardo's channel. I have it down in the description box below. Thank you so much for joining me in the show. You're very welcome. Thanks again, Leon. It was a wonderful session. Thank you.